Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to be learning how to create our own custom eyes in Photoshop for photo fitting characters. So you can see this uh, character you have in front of you right here with these uh, beautiful uh, brown hazel eyes. This is actually uh, similar to Sandra. I took the original Sandra image and did the photo fitting for this. And these are eyes that I've just created myself in Photoshop. So we're going to learn how to recreate these kind of eyes, these kind of sensual eyes that she's looking at us right now, in just a moment. So first of all, I'm going to stop this project and I'm going to load the original project that I started from. And this is what happens. Uh, we're going to go to this Sandra photo fitting project right here. This is what happens. You notice that the eyes are quite different. And when you fit a character, when you do photo fitting for a character, whether uh, you know a single image or a dual image, you're going to have slightly strange eyes. You can't really see them right now. But if I go into my eye settings right here, Let's take a look at when I preview my character's eyes. You'll notice that we kind of have like these dual eyelids, which obviously we don't want. And that's because Crazy Talk 8 is taking the data from your character's uh, eyelids to try to create the eyeball. So you get kind of weird alien looking eyelids like this. And this is not what you want unless you want your character to look like an alien. So let's stop previewing this. And let's take a look at this diffuse map. So this is the diffuse map that's generated when you uh, do your photo fitting for your character. Let's go ahead and save this out by clicking this save file button right here and let's just call it uh, eyes01, save it to our desktop. Okay, and then I'm going to go into uh, my desktop here and eyes01 right there, I'm going to right click it and we're going to open it in Photoshop and let's take a look at what we can do to fix these eyes. So as you can see, this entire area right here is supposed to basically be an eyeball and in this case it's not, it's basically the eyelids are in the way. So that's the root of our problem right there. So let's zoom in a little bit and let's create some artificial eyeballs here. We're going to try to maintain as much of the uh, original uh, iris texture as we can here. So to do that, what I'm going to do is use my uh, ellipse selection tool here. And let's just select the area that we think uh, you know is good for the uh, iris right there. We can select that. If you want to change the selection, you can go to select and transform selection. You can maybe uh, expand it out a little bit if you want, something like that. I think we had it pretty good. Um, you know, it's kind of fluky on the first try there. And then just press enter when you're done that. And we don't want to modify the iris just yet. We want to create the eyeball first. So to do that, I'm going to press control, shift, and I at the same time. And that's going to invert select. So it's going to select everything except for my iris. And what I want to do then is I'm going to use my color picker tool up here. And we're going to select a pretty dark area of the uh, eyeball because we want to, uh, I'll show you why in just a moment. So we're going to select you know, this area right here. It turns out it's kind of like a, a weird kind of gray right there, down there. And then let's just use our brush. So I'm going to select the brush tool over here. And you can just paint over. You can maybe increase the brush size even a little bit. And let's just paint over like this. So it doesn't obviously look like eyeball color, but don't really worry too much about it because uh, it's going to look more natural in the end. And uh, we're just going to paint over that entire area. It doesn't have to be super accurate. You can just do something like that. All right, and then we're good to go. Let's go ahead and select the color swatch. And let's choose something a little bit lighter. Maybe ooh, a nice uh, gray like that. Okay, and then we'll just go ahead and, you know, create another, like, lighter area closer to the eyeball right here. Okay, so we're going to have to need, we're going to need to uh, mix this up a little bit. And we can luckily do that using our doo -doo 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 mixer brush tool right here. So let's uh, zoom in a little bit here. And what you want to do is uh, select a pretty soft uh, brush, like this one right here. Um, soft, round, pressure size brush, something like that. And then you want to go ahead and uh, try to you know, mix these in like this. You don't want to uh, obviously get those um, edges. So you want to try and you know, just mix it in from the side to just blend in those edges a little bit. Again, I'm using a mouse here. So we're not going to be super, super you know, awesome at uh, this. but. Uh, you kind of get the point there. Whoops, you don't want to zoom out and not zoom in. And you want to just try and blend this in nicely to the surrounding eyeballs just by clicking and dragging. I think the smudge tool might also work in certain cases for this, but uh, I like to use this mix tool. You can see the settings I have there at the top. And there's a pretty natural looking, you know, fade right there. It's not excellent, but uh, you get that nice, um, because your, some of your eyeball is going to be in shadow, obviously, so you want to try something like this. And I think we should be good to go there. Now, the next item of business, we want to create the eye veins. So to do that, I'm going to select my regular brush, 
And I have Google Chrome open here. If you want to download this uh, uh, Vampire Veins uh, Photoshop brush, you can get it from uh, user Wicked Brush here. So thanks for that. And you can download it over here where it says download. And you just load that up in your uh, Photoshop brushes. So we'll close that down right now. And then in my Photoshop brushes, I have it down here somewhere. There we go. I think this uh, this one here looks pretty good. And you can see the vein type of uh, brush right there. Let's choose a dark, dark red, like something like this, a burgundy almost. And then what we can do is just click and it'll create some veins for us. Uh, we can, yeah, 100% opacity is fine. And we can click again over here. And now you don't want to like click like this because it's going to look really weird. So I'm just going to press Control Z and undo that. So you can go ahead and like rotate your brush slightly. So just something like this and then you can uh, you know, have it go from the top and then rotate your brush like this and have it from the side and uh, you know just basically rotate the brush around your character's uh, iris and uh, you kind of get the point here and don't worry if you're going over the edges there because it's not going to take any data from this area outside anyway so what you want to do is just try and get some you can probably decrease the brush size slightly and make it a little bit more intense along the edges. So something like this. Do, 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 do. We don't want to spend too much time on these veins. I'm pretty terrible at veins anyways, as you can see. But uh, that looks fine. <laughs> we don't want our eyes to look too bloodshot. Uh, so just you know, try and get try and get it darker around the edges generally. And uh, I think this should be almost okay. We get this one last area here to go. And don't worry about overlapping the other eye because we're just going to copy this eye because we don't want to do two eyes there. All right, so I think we're pretty much done for our uh, eyeball. So let's go ahead and press Control Shift I, and now we only have the iris area selected. We don't have the eyeball selected. I know the eyeball looks pretty nasty, but once you're once it's in Crazy Talk Eight, it'll look fine. All right, so let's go ahead. In this case, I'm going to use our good old clone stamp tool. Uh, we're going to select the clone stamp tool right here. And what I want to do is take an area from the iris and we want to get rid of this, you know, remainder of the eyelid. So let's hold Alt and uh, select an area that we want to use as a reference here. And then we can just click like this and hold Alt at an empty area like this. And then click, 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 click like that. Or you can click and drag in certain cases. Uh, it really depends. But basically we're just trying to, we're just trying to get rid of uh, the eyeball using the natural kind of textures of the eyes. Now you don't really have to do this. Um, you can probably just take uh, the color of the iris and blend it over top or just you know paint it directly over top because we're going to have another uh, section uh, here where we're going to basically just create some noise and blur to create the appearance, a nice appearance of an iris here. But uh, you know you can get this yellow stuff to go around the edges which is pretty cool. Um, you know you want to uh, this yellow to be around the actual pupil. Uh, there we go. Again, not super duper accurate, but uh, we're going for it. And try and get a uh, you know, reasonably circular uh, yellow area around. Don't worry about the, uh, the white uh, streak there right now. Oops. There we go, we're slowly getting that, uh, you don't want that black to sneak in there. All right, I think that's going to be good. It looks pretty nasty right now, but uh, we're going to fix it in a moment. And then we can also take the, uh, um, use our brush tool here with a black color and give ourselves an iris. Um, just using that same brush tool. Let's use uh, hardness, a higher hardness now, and then we'll just whoop, paint over. This iris is super black, or sorry, the pupil is super black. I need to learn my anatomy. All right, so then we have a you know, decent looking uh, eyeball right there. Maybe not perfectly round, but let's fix that later. What I want to do now is I want to blur this. So I have this iris area selected. Actually, it's kind of, let's use the clone stamp tool here again just to even it out a little bit. I think this area over here is a little bit, uh, do, 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 do. kind of just bothering me there. All right, looks a little bit more circular. Again, I'm just kind of eyeballing this right here. We're not going to get a perfect circle. We can always, you know, write over, draw over a perfect circle anyways. Okay, let's just go ahead and use this. So I'm going to go with this selected, go to filter. 
and I'm going to create some noise in this area. So noise, add some noise, just something like that. Okay, that looks fine and dandy. And we'll go ahead and press okay. And then I wanna go filter and blur. And now we want to use a radial blur. So we're gonna create a radial blur. You don't wanna use the spin method right here. You wanna use the zoom method. Um, use the best quality, if you will. And then maybe something like uh, 15 or 14. Go ahead and press okay. And then we get that nice kind of iris effect like that. If we want, we can blur it more. We can, uh, you know, go Control Z, go to Filter, uh, do, 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 blur again, radial blur, and we can use uh, a something like 23, and then you get the result like that. All right, so those basically just uh, you know showing how to create the iris there, and then if we want to clean up the uh, pupil again, we can do so. You know, sharpen the edges a little bit, um, right there. Oops, oh, that was made it. Uh, like an oblong shape there. Okay, we're just gonna leave it like that. All right, so we have this, uh, you know, pretty decent looking iris. If we want, we can also, you know, press Control D to deselect that area. Maybe we want to make it a little bit darker around the edges. So we can go ahead and do that as well by using our ellipse tool right here, and we can create a an ellipse around our uh, eyeball, just like this. Don't worry if it's not totally accurate. Now make sure, of course, that your shape detail, you don't have any fill. Uh, fill type is set to cancel right here. Your color uh, stroke type here can be, um, you know, any color that you want. Um, we're going to try and use a darker brown here, which is uh, okay. And you can also change the, uh, you know, shape details as well. So you can um, change it to like something like three. If you want to get like a border like that, maybe. So I think that'll be okay. And then we'll go ahead and. Uh, Get that out of there. And I think the shape is okay. We can press control T to move it slightly, I think, to the right here. Yeah, it looks a little bit more centered. There we go. Move it down a little bit. Okay, we're just gonna leave it right there and press enter. And then we're gonna go ahead and use something called the radial uh, blur. First of all, we need to go ahead and uh, right click that layer. We can rasterize it, doesn't really matter. Just uh, so we have it like this, and then let's go and use our filter. And then we use a different filter now called the iris blur. You can actually use this originally for your regular eye anyways, but I uh, just wanted to use two different types here. So let's go to blur gallery and use iris blur. And let's move that iris blur right over the iris and uh, zoom out a little bit. And you just want to bring in these points like this. Uh, if I can select them here, there we go. Just like that. And bring them right into the middle and then take this outer area and, uh, you know, um, blend it in there a little bit. Let's get that slight brown uh, blend. Do something like that. Uh, you know, I'm not going to be super accurate because I'm not a Photoshop pro by any stretch of the imagination here. But you just want to try and get that, uh, you know, nice um, brown blend in there on the outer edge there. And I think that should be uh, about fine for what we're trying to achieve here. Um, yeah, okay, we'll just leave it like that. All right, so there we go. There's our iris right there. And let's press enter. Whoops. Press enter there. And there's our uh, newly created iris. Now, what we want to do here is we also want to create sort of a reflection. Now, if you're exporting this character or if this ex exporting this character to uh, Character Creator, you don't really need to create a reflection because it'll actually generate a, a reflection in the software. But uh, if you want to, you can create your own reflection because, you know, most eyes have white reflections on them like this in uh, natural lit settings. So let's just go ahead, simply choose a pure white color in our uh, color swatch there and use a nice little brush here. Let's make sure we have uh, you know, a brush with decent hardness. Something like this will be fine. There we go. And we can just create a nice little white reflection area right there right be whatever shape you want um, but i like to use that circle right there so now we have that white reflective area all right so that's pretty much our eye is pretty much finished right there let's just go ahead and use our selection tool one more time here elliptical selection and let's select that uh, eyeball area right there do, 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 i think that looks fine okay and uh we can actually just right click this ellipse and uh uh, merge down if we want. So then we can just press Control C and Control V, and that's going to create another eyeball on a separate layer. And let's press the V hotkey to move it, and let's move it directly over there. 
Actually, let's not do that right now. I'm going to actually just make this layer invisible for now. And you're going to see the difference between the two eyes first. So let's go file and save, up, save this out as a uh, JPEG. We'll call it eyes02 and press enter. Okay. And back in crazy talk, let's load up the eyes02 and take a look at the difference between these two eyes now. So you can see this one, even though we use a fairly like uh, um, dark color on our eyeballs, the eyeballs still look fairly white. But you can adjust that later and I'll show you how in just a moment. So let's preview this. You can see there's our brand new eyeball. Looks pretty much, you know, pretty similar to the original one, maybe a little bit lighter. You can always fix that uh, later on as well. So it looks kind of weird where one eyeball is like that and the other one has the frog eyes. So again, let's go uh, stop this preview. Let's go back into uh, Photoshop here. And let's, uh, again, just make this eye visible, this layer visible here, and place it directly over the second eye. Luckily, they're identical, so we don't have to do this twice. And then let's go File, Save As, and we'll save it as Eyes03. Need to make sure we save it as a JPEG here. There we go. Eyes03. Okay. And in uh, Crazy Talk 8 here, we're going to load up the Eyes03. All right, so then the eyes are basically replaced here. We can adjust the brightness slightly. I find this is helpful to maybe take the brightness down to like something like not that low, maybe like, a, you know, minus 14, minus 16, that area. And then the eyes look a little bit more natural. Now, another slight adjustment you may want to do to the eyes is you may want to change the position uh, to slightly a little bit higher. Uh, the reason for this is because when your character's eyes are a little bit higher, the irises are a little bit higher, they look more engaging, like they're looking at the user and not looking down or off into the distance. It's a very subtle adjustment that you can make. So with your right eye and left eye selected, you can move it up on the y-axis just like this. And one of the eyes is a slightly different position than the other, I, think, I believe. So let's take the right eye. There we go, move that one up by itself. Okay, so now it looks more like she's actually looking at us like she's engaged with the uh, user or the viewer. All right, so something like this, where the lower part of the iris is just barely touching the, uh, the lower eyelid. And this looks a bit more engaging um, for your character's uh, eyes, I believe. So uh, again, try and adjust that to, to your liking. But that's just a little uh, tip for you there. And then we can go ahead and preview this. And there we go. There's our eyes, and they're kind of coming out a bit on the edge there. We can adjust that with the scale as well. Um, let's go ahead and uh, stop that preview. Go to scale, and we can probably scale the eyes slightly. Or we can actually just move them in as well. Um, take the depth uh, the opposite way there. So maybe this level here, and if we preview. There we go. That's generally fixed the uh, problem right there. All right, so we can just uh, adjust the depth slightly, and our eyes are looking fine and dandy. You can even see the uh, eye veins that we created in there as well. So, uh, you know, not too awesome, but we've uh, you know at least gotten something detailed. And then we can go ahead and apply the actor elements to our character like we had before. So let's go to actor elements. I believe we had this long ponytail here, right here. Uh, we had a uh, business suit. Let's go to the body right here and use this female blazer um, outfit. And then we can finally go to atmosphere and put her in the business office right here. And that's what we had at the beginning of this tutorial. So that's what it for this tutorial, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Just wanted to show you how you can create some, you know, cool, realistic looking eyes in Photoshop um, because it's, uh, you know, you don't, obviously don't want to use those photo fitting eyes and you can get really uh, nice looking eyes like this and uh, change the position slightly to make them more engaging to the user or the viewer. So again, thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com and I will see you next time.